Hey, welcome back to Robinson Foundry. In today's video, I'll be using 3D printing and metal casting to create an epic solid silver sledgehammer. This copper sledgehammer is one of the coolest things I've ever made, and it's one of my most popular videos. And I also made this one. I'm not really sure what it's made out of. The hammerhead will be cast using 12 pounds of sterling silver, which is made up of 92.5% silver and 7.5% copper. Before I could cast anything, first I needed to design and 3D print the head that I'll use to create a mold. I printed the head using a special 3D printing filament that could be smoothed with alcohol vapor. By placing the print in an alcohol-filled container, the outer layers melt, giving them a nice smooth finish. Next I attached a large sprue to the top of the hammerhead. A large sprue like this is necessary to avoid shrinkage in the casting as the liquid metal solidifies and shrinks. Any shrinkage will occur on the sprue and not on the casting, well at least that's the plan. Remember shrinkage is for cold pools, not hammers. The last two sledgehammers that I made were cast in sand molds. This one will be cast using a ceramic shell mold that I'll build up around the 3D print. This yellow stuff is the ceramic shell in liquid form, called slurry. Over the course of about a week, I slowly built up a coating about 9 layers thick. In between each layer, I sprinkled the wet slurry with some silica sand, which helps build up a thick shell. With the shell completed, it was time to start melting out the 3D print. I placed it inside my kiln and slowly brought up the temperature to the melting point of the plastic. This way the plastic can melt out of the shell and I can just remove it rather than burning it all away. Cracking is always a concern with these ceramic shell molds. The vast majority of the shells I make crack to some degree, and this was no exception. It cracked so badly that there was no way I could fill it with metal without having it leak all over the place, so I just had to abort. I ended up attempting to fix the crack using some fiberglass cloth and some slurry as a patch. After that, it was back to the kiln to fire the shell at around 1500 degrees Fahrenheit to turn it into a durable ceramic. I checked on it a few times and saw that my repair was holding, which was a big relief. While the kiln was heating up, I started melting this glorious pile of silver. Having carefully designed the hammer and sprue, I knew that their combined volume was 12 pounds exactly. Things happened fast when the silver was ready. I quickly removed the mold from the kiln and placed it into an old crucible. Then I poured hot sand around the edges to help keep the mold in place. Then I carefully lifted by far the most expensive crucible of molten metal I have ever lifted out of the furnace and poured it into the mold as quickly as possible.
just after the pour and while the metal was still liquid, I lifted the mold out of the sand to prevent the sand from insulating the casting and causing it to cool too slowly. If I didn't do this, I would risk the sprue solidifying first, which would pull metal away from the casting and that would be a disaster. If you enjoy watching my videos and you would like to help me continue to make them, then consider joining my Patreon for weekly shop updates and 3D print files. I also have affiliate links in the description if you're interested in checking out any of the items I use. I love breaking open these molds. It's always the moment of truth to see if my hard work has paid off. I was super happy to see that this casting turned out great and I couldn't wait to start finishing it up. First I used my sandblaster to remove most of the shell because that's about the only thing that works. Then I cut off the sprue. I'll have to come up with something cool to make using the rest of this silver. If you have any ideas, let me know. I was careful to collect most of the shavings to remelt later. I used the milling machine to square up the face that I cut the sprue from. And again, I made sure to collect all the metal chips I could. Then I filed in some chamfers to match the ones on the opposite side. Unfortunately, the more I cleaned up the head, the more I revealed bubbles that formed during the casting. Sterling silver is famous for absorbing oxygen in its liquid state, which can result in these defects. I really wish there was something I could do to fix them, but there just isn't, so I have to live with them. TIG welding really would be the best option, but considering that silver is the most thermally conductive metal known to man, it would be difficult to accomplish with my setup. I thought that a walnut handle would really complement this beautiful chunk of silver, so that's what I started working on next. I used a spoke shape to cut the curves into the handle and that thing made quick work of it. It was my first time using one of these tools and I'm really amazed at how well it worked. Fitting the head onto the handle is a slow and tedious process that can't be rushed. So I took my time and ended up with a really nice fit. With the handle fitting well, I filed some chamfers onto each end and then sanded everything nice and smooth.
My original plan was to round over all the edges, but I really like how the geometry of the handle matches the geometry of the head, so I just left it. To finish off the handle, I sealed it with some polyurethane varnish. I am having a custom stamp made with my channel logo on it, but I don't have it yet, so I'll just have to stamp the head later on. I made a little wedge from the leftover walnut off camera and then hammered it into place. The hole in the hammerhead has a slight taper to it, which allows the wood at the top to expand when the wedge is pounded in, and that locks the hammerhead in place. Well here it is, a nearly 6 pound solid silver sledgehammer. I really couldn't be happier with how it turned out. It's truly something to behold, and ever since making this hammer, I've had way fewer werewolves and vampires lurking around my house. I hope you all enjoyed watching me make this, and if you did, please let me know what you think in the comments, give the video a thumbs up, and subscribe for future projects. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.